In tonight's 7 Up Front segment, we're taking a closer look at the ramifications of Russia's attack on Ukraine. I'm joined this evening by University of Michigan professor and retired U.S. Ambassador Melvin Levitsky. Ambassador, thanks for being there tonight. It's good to be with you. Let's begin with the gravity of what has taken place in Ukraine in the last 24 hours. Is toppling the current government in Kyiv, which seems to be a goal, going to be enough to satisfy Vladimir Putin? Well, I'm not sure what enough is. He's, he already has violated every international treaty, including uh, including the UN Charter, by uh, by invading. Um, this is international implications, not just European implications, uh, because if he gets away with this and installs a government that's friendly to, to Russia, a number of countries around the world are going to be worried about what their neighbors' uh, attitudes toward them might be. So it goes beyond U.S. national interests, of course, and European interests. It's, it's a global interest to have this pushed back. Now, the question of what we do and how we do it with regard to sanctions or other kinds of actions is, is a policy matter that will have to be decided by the administration. And the, but president the response is going to have to be quite strong. President Biden sending another 7,000 troops to Europe to bolster NATO countries there. Will the alliance hold firm, in your view, against Putin? And do you believe the sanctions announced today will make a difference? The threat of sanctions certainly did not deter Putin. Sanctions are made and designed to change behavior. They have worked in some cases, if we think, for example, of South Africa and getting rid of apartheid. They worked uh, to a certain extent in the Middle East, particularly in Iraq. They have not worked very well on Iran. So it's, it's spotty. It depends what, um, what Putin wants to get out of this. But if he wants to be recognized, if he wants his country to be recognized as a world leader, co-equal, with NATO, with the United States, with Western Europe, this is exactly opposite and contradictory to that goal because he basically has put Russia in the position of international outlaw, of violating every international treaty that I can, uh, that I can think of, including, as I said, the UN Charter. Yeah. What else could and should the U.S. and our NATO partners do since President Biden insists U.S. forces will not enter the fight in Ukraine? Well, we, can cer we certainly have and will continue to at least arm Ukraine and try to prop up uh, Ukraine in, in terms of their battle now with the Russian forces. We also want to make sure that those NATO members, members around, including the Baltic states, including Poland, and those, uh, Slovakia, all kinds of countries that border on Ukraine are well-armed, ready to go forward. And we have an obligation in the NATO Treaty, Article 5, that an attack on one is an attack on all. Those are NATO members. If they, if Putin goes further, it becomes even more serious because then a military response from the United States and other NATO partners would certainly be uh, would, would certainly come about. And then the question is, is there escalation? So Putin has put the world in grave danger. You know, two nu nuclear powers, a big alliance that has obligations toward its members. Uh, it's a very touchy situation. It's a tinderbox. Oh. And uh, we'll, see, uh, we'll see whether Putin has limited, limited objectives and will stop at some point or whether he has... An objective, for example, to reconstitute the Soviet Union, and which, in my mind, would be a, an insane, an insane goal. Yeah. Now, at the same time, he's warning against interference, threatening, quote, consequences you've never faced in your history. Bellico's rhetoric, to be sure, is he threatening the use of nuclear weapons here? Well, you know, the Russians have uh, a, a number have. Uh, uh, Top notch, top grade weapons, including fast cruise missiles, and, and uh, including atomic weapons, um, other missiles, uh, intercontinental missiles. It, it, w when someone, when a country like Russia says that, you you need to pay attention to it. But remember, 
if there were a nuclear exchange with the United States or with Europe, the response would wipe out Russia as well. I can't imagine that he would be insane enough to have that happen. So I'm not saying it's a bluff. He is, he is pointing out that they will, they, you know, if we get into this, that they will respond forcefully. What he means exactly, I don't know. Yeah. Let's hope it doesn't mean that he would go to the ultimate. I don't think that's the case, but we always have to keep that in mind. Any planner would have to keep that in mind. We'll have to we have a strong military. And we have a great, uh, a very strong response ready if we have to. Well, we'll leave it there tonight. Uh, we thank you so much for being with us tonight. Uh, Professor and former Ambassador Levitsky, thank you very much for joining us here tonight. Thanks for asking me. I enjoyed being with you, and I hope things turn out well. I do as well, sir. Thank you.